Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. We are looking at specific strategies for developing students' vocabulary. The first one, purposefully plan vocabulary infusion in which the teacher embeds and models sophisticated vocabulary. You start by identifying words that are used in the classroom or found in the curriculum. It could be a social studies, science, or reading curriculum. Then you identify more sophisticated or different words that you could substitute, words they may not have commonly encountered. Then you plan specific places during the week in which to substitute the more sophisticated or different words, and you mark these in your lesson plan. Example, instead of gather, you'd say, can we congregate at the front? And then you would keep a tally of when and where you use these new words each week. And I would recommend five to ten. Start with five and work your way up. You will find students using the words that you model in your classroom. Word walls, visual displays, and graphic organizers, we will be looking at these specifically later, but you display the words so they can see the concepts and the relationship to other words or concepts. Used to reinforce what you are teaching and words, but also a great post-lesson or post-reading activity. You can give small groups different words and these posters would show up on the wall someplace. There's an example, another example, lots of examples. Synonyms and associations or super word web. The purpose is to add depth and dimension to word knowledge. This works best in small groups. First, the target word is shown in the context of the sentence. Students then make inferences as to the meaning. The football player was very aggressive. He ran hard and fast. So uh, you are reinforcing the use of context or the semantic cueing system. Then students are put in pairs or small groups and they have to find words or phrases that are synonymous. They can use a thesarsis or the computer and that's why working in groups is best. They list the synonyms in one side things they associate with that on the other. And again, the conversation that takes place in small groups is great. Encourage them to include pictures, either drawings or things cut and pasted from the internet. And you want to simplify for emergent levels. Here's an example of this. You can see it again. A simplified chart. Mary is very inquisitive. Synonyms there, associations there. For younger students at the emergent level, they may be overwhelmed with having to look up and find synonyms, so I create a synonym box. And I say find three to five or find the words that you know or think are important and put that there. And then they make the associations. Again, works best in pairs or small groups. The super word web is a more visual type of uh, uh, syn synonym and association. Again, you see the word in context, list three to four synonyms or defining phrases inside the figure and associations on the outside. Again, pairs, small groups, create posters or learning log or journal entries. He had a myriad of things to do. Adds depth and dimension. She could play the piano effortlessly. Words or phrases, associations, depth and dimension. Classifying works best if students have had exposure to the words, of course, should be done in small group. The conversation that takes place again enhances learning. Students are given two or more target words used as category headings. These are words that you are targeting for vocabulary instruction. Then you have a list or a word box and they have to put the word in the right category. Students given words related to one of the target words or associations. It could be a synonym or something related and they have to put them in the right category. With younger students, I like to use three by five so they have something to physically manipulate. Older students, these make great posters. You can give them a sheet of paper and they have to put this on a large poster. Uh, adopt and adapt, uh, you're limited only by your imagination. This is for beginning level readers and above. We have more words here. Vocabulary rating, a pre and post reading activity. And we showed you how to do this in an earlier uh, video. But you list the target words found in an upcoming lesson or a reading selection. Students rate the words, their level of knowledge, 
And as a post-reading activity, then again, they rate it again. So they are aware of these words, they encounter them in context, and hopefully the numbers go up. This can be used uh, as a pre-post reading or pre-post lesson activity. Semantic features analysis, a pre-during and post-reading activity, all three of these. Uh, you have a table. The target words are found on the vertical axis and descriptors on the top. And you go through this as a pre-reading activity. You do just a little mini lesson on each one. Then as students encounter the word in the text or in the lesson, they check the semantic features that apply. So it's concept learning as well as adding depth and dimension to vocabulary knowledge. Semantic features analysis. All right. That is the end of this one. Next, we'll be looking at visual displays and graphic organizers.